Hi, Word. Hi, Hi Tina. Hi, Martina. Hi. Um, how are Hello. you? Thank you. Thank you very much to everyone for being here. We are very excited to have you participating in our online series of events, what we call the walkthroughs. Um, let me tell you more about it. We thought of uh, uh, walkthrough as our response today to the times we're living. Definitely very challenging. Um, we have seen a lot of museums uh, implementing large layoffs, galleries, canceling shows, and, and you know, for a scene closer, um, and art fairs being postponed. So we at Synthesis have been reflecting on the best response to today to the situation. And, and we think that now more than ever, it's so important to stay connected, stay closer to each other, inspire and getting inspired. So we came up with this new concept that we call like walkthrough. How is it gonna work? So we are going to meet um, safely online once a week for the next three weeks. Um, and it's going to be a conversation with curators joining and artists that in turn put a headset on, share the screen, and walk us through the VR work. Um, so this is nothing else than just VR art live stream through the artist's eyes. Um, the focus of the walkthrough is on providing an overview of the artist's creative process and, uh, and some insights into the work as heard from the artists, um, the artists themselves, as they walk us through the piece. So uh, we also thought that it's of, um, you know, somehow of, of primary importance to link the walkthroughs to topics relevant to um, nowadays. So, um, so to the times we're living. So uh, today we will uh, we will talk about perception of self and the creation of identity in the digital world with Martina and Tina. Next week on April 29th, next Wednesday, we'll address nature and environment with, with Pastor Placek and Julia Bibas. Um, on May 8th, um, we, will, we will talk about the construction of virtual world and the interaction with physical ones with Khan Buyuk Berber and Jesse Daimiani. Um, now I'm really, really happy, happy and honored to have uh, we meet today uh, Tina Zauerlander and Martina Menegon for the first act, act of uh, walkthrough. Um, I'm going to uh, you know, introduce, briefly introduce them. Tina Zauerlander, Zauerlander is an art historian and curator based in Berlin in, in her curatorial work and projects and also studies, correct me if I'm wrong, Tina. Um, Tina focuses a lot on the impact of the digital and the internet uh, on individual environments and society. Tina has been organizing international group shows since 2010 with her independent exhibition platform called Peer to Space. Uh, among the probably the most important ones, there is the one at the House of Electronic Arts in uh, Basel in 2017 uh, called the Unframed, Unframed World Virtual Reality as Artistic Medium for the 21st Century. Uh, she's the co-founder of Radiance VR, an international online platform for virtual virtual reality experiences and art and the founder of Salon, um, which is an international network for a woman working in the arts. Um, Martina Menegon is an artist working with interactive art and mixed realities art. Um, she likes to create, she works with um, MR to, to, to an interactive art to um, create intimate and complex collage of physical and virtual elements exploring the contemporary self and his synthetic corporal reality. Um, Martina will talk about, you know, it's a concept, the concept of corporal reality is something that Martina introduced with one of the pieces that we will actually uh, see today. Martina teaches at the University of Applied Arts in Vienna and regularly collaborates with Klaus Hobermeyer, I hope my pronunciation is right, and Stefano D'Alessio teaching, teaching multimedia tools for interactive arts at the University of the Arts in Venice. And since 2019, Martina has been directing AFK, um, curating uh, mixed reality art exhibitions in Vienna. Uh, who am I? I'm George Vitale. I'm a creative director and exhibition maker based in Berlin. Uh, my projects evolves around the role and influence of technology on society through the lens of art and the eyes of the artist. In 2017, I founded a VR-based um, experimental art gallery called Synthesis. Uh, Synthesis uh, Gallery is a first of its kind space dedicated to VR art form, a fusion, a fusion of technology and art. It brings 
immersive virtual reality experiences produced by artists that like to experiment with the thin line between physical and virtual worlds. Uh, the gallery was founded in New York City in uh, October 2017 and opened their doors, its doors to the public uh, in April 2018. Uh, Works and pieces are displayed through different media, um, more traditional art forms and more tangible art forms intermingle with Oculus. We like a VR headset. We are dedicated to exhibiting internationally uh, renowned, uh, well-established artists alongside emerging ones. Uh, moving forward, I would like to give you a brief, uh, quick introduction, um, a quick introduction of, of the um, um, of the of the of the talk, um, Martina will show in VR, or should I say, walk us through, <laughs> probably um, two works of hers. Plug your nose and 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 uh, try to um. And uh, when you are close to me, I shiver, which is a work in progress. Tina and I will engage with Martina and ask questions. At the end of the session, we will open the floor to Q and A. So if you are watching us on Zoom or Facebook, please your, leave your questions in the chat box, and and you know uh, for an opportunity to to ask these questions to um, Martina. Now um, I think it's time to turn on the VR, Martina, right? Yes. <laughs> so, I, I will briefly introduce Martina's first piece, uh, first um, work called Plug Your Nose and Try to Um, which is a virtual reality installation where the participant is surrounded by floating miniature bodies, um, of course, Martina's bodies. They can be heat, grab, stretch out, and tossed around. Um, I will appreciate if uh, Martina could tell us more about this piece. And if you could like uh, elaborate a little bit on the concept of um, uh, uh, corporate reality that I, that I introduced previously. Sure, so just give me a second, I'm just gonna start the project and share with you guys the screen. So you should now be able to see my VR. We and do. So. <laughs> yeah, so plug your nose and trying to hang has been my first VR project. Um, as, as George mentioned, this was like created with this topic of synthetic corporeality in mind. So uh, by the time I created this project, I was researching a lot for my own thesis. Um, what is synthetic corporeality and how can I implement this concept in my project? So, uh, for me, synthetic corporeality is basically a virtual space or a virtual reality where you can actually manage to trigger physical reaction from the users. And in my, oh yeah, everything is really slow today, of course. Can you still see me? Yes. Good. Um, so the idea was when I was researching how can I trigger this synthetic corporeality, um, it was a lot about like having distortions of the bodies. And so that's basically the standing point for this project where you can see all around me, there are all these tiny figures floating and humming. And as a user, you can just look at them, but you can also, sorry, I might just need to quickly check because I think it's running very slow for you guys also, right? It's just behind on Facebook. It just takes longer until it arrives on Facebook, but it works but there I, too. I think it's normal. I think it's normal. There is a little bit of lag and delay, but I think it's normal. Okay, because, uh, yeah, okay. Um, Yes, yeah, so basically, as you can see, you can just look around, but with the controller, you can also just push the bodies um, away from you if they get too near, or you can also grab them with the controllers and like uh, stretch them and throw them. So you can choose the level of interaction you want to have with these bodies and how sensitive towards the bodies you are. Um, so again, you can just like be very gentle with those bodies as well as very violent somehow towards these bodies that are somehow helpless because they're just being created all around you and they're just floating. That's the only thing they can do. Uh, while you as a user have a really huge um, power on, on them. Um, I'm just gonna quickly try to restart because it's really slow for me so I can't really show you the interaction. Uh, for some reason this is like, not working as it was before. So I'm so sorry for that. 
just let me know if yeah if for you it's getting better i'm just gonna go down with the quality so share and here we go again yeah it's much better oh thank you yeah, it's much better now for us too yeah. yeah so yeah. as i was saying you see i can just with the controller I used to you know gently push them and move them away from me if, if they're getting too near um i can also grab them because what they're doing is they're humming and i can kind of grab them and put them next to my ear to hear more what they're humming i can put them two together and just move them around or look at the bodies but as you can already see, I can be rather mean. So I can, for example, take two parts of the body and like, you know, stretch it so much and I can toss it away from me. Or I can just, you know, move them around and stretch them and then throw them like it would be out of rubber material. So, and this project was created with um, 3D scan of my own body uh, back in 2000, uh, end of 2015 actually, this 3D scan is. And um, as you can see, it's rather well done. This was not done in 3D scanning, but in photogrammetry techniques. So I went to a studio to have a really proper model of myself. And I used this for uh, many other projects after that and also before that. So I don't know, George, did I answer your question about synthetic corporeality? Or do you want to know more about it? I, um, what I was thinking is like, uh, um, the, what I wanted to ask is that, and then I will leave the, the um, I will leave like the room for for uh, um, to Tina for some questions. I want. I was wondering um, if uh, you know the interaction with the bodies in the virtual environment defies like gravity with natural and unnatural movements. And I think by by implementing the interaction with the floating bodies, you succeed in making the work a little bit more and the whole experience a bit more real and less virtual. So I was wondering, is there anything in particular that you would expect to see in the particip participants' interactions with the work? Um, well, when I created this project, this was very, it, it was my very first VR project. So uh, because I was coming from this interactive art background, um, I just wanted to give kind of an open floor to the user. So I put certain levels that you could reach or not reach. Um, but I always wanted the user to be deciding what to do and how to do it. Um, what I realized while showing this project is, of course, I mean, I'm very fond of this body and it's my body and um, I have a very gentle approach with this body. So what I always wonder or what I always want from the users when using my project is, of course, at the beginning, you would play around and, you know, check all the possibilities. Um, but then at one point, you would just start to get very sensitive towards this body this fragility that they are kind of showing in, in this project. And I always, I always would love to see people getting very sensitive and, you know, move very gentle in the space and, you know, slowly push them, but not, nothing more. So just enjoying this, being surrounded by these, uh, by these entities. But is this, is this what happens in reality with the users who use your work? Are they as gentle as you hope for? Um, no, they usually not. <laughs> 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 um, uh, it depends. I realize it depends a lot on how it is set the work. So uh, when it's not being shown in the space, what is happening in VR, it's very likely people are going to get even more crazy than usual with my bodies. When you can actually, or when you're aware that people are looking at what you are experiencing in VR, then I, I realize sometimes some people are very gentle with the body. So, um, I'm always trying to take care when I set it up. That I can't hear you, Martina, anymore. Can you hear me? Me? I can hear you, Tina. I think Martina froze. Martina froze. Martina's oh, she's back. back. She's back, yeah. Oh, gosh. I'm no going to stop sharing because I think it's just like very... Yeah. 
hard for, I don't know why. It's also the word, uh, my background, if you can see it on Facebook also. Um, it's also the same work, plug your nose and try to hum. Did I stop at one point on my answer? <laughs> Please answer again. <laughs> Okay, uh, well, so usually, yes, usually people will just go crazy with their bodies. Um, most of the time, they're just going to grab them and stretch them and like, you know, laugh and throw them and just, uh, you know, standing, like they would stay in the air for a long time just throwing these bodies mm -hmm. around. Um, but it has happened sometimes due to the setup that, you know, people were actually very gentle. So I think it has a lot to do on how free you feel yourself in VR, like how excluded from the actual physical space you are. Um, so if you feel watched, you will feel, I, I think people will feel more like being gentle than being violent, while if you feel like you're alone and nobody's watching, then people will tend to go really crazy. Yeah, totally, that's the case. So people, I mean, I know the work and it's a really, it's very voyeuristic situation when you enter the work for the first time. And if there is no, if no one can see what you do, it's it's totally you. You are basically yourself, and you can do what you want, and you would totally interact differently when you know that everyone sees you interacting with the figures. Yeah. And also, I mean, it's really important maybe also to say that the these are really tiny, tiny um, matinas in this work. They're about like ten centimeters, right? And you are like all naked, and so you're in a really fragile and inferior position in comparison to the um, to the user of the work and why did you choose such a position for yourself in, in this work um, well the the real so the, the first thing that happened was when I got these 3d scans uh, I just wanted to put it on unity and just see how it would look and I had already this idea of using, I love to use random things on my project. So I just had this spawning that would just randomly clone objects um, at their default size. So what I did was just taking this body I had and putting it into this script. And I just realized they were so tiny and I just felt this extreme intense connection with those really tiny bodies. And I kind of thought, okay, I want to see if I can make also other people feel that connection even though it's not their body so uh, the the reason for the size just happened out of like um happy mistake you would say uh, in my in my project uh, but i just love it since the beginning since i saw it and i thought okay i need to keep that going <laughs> right and um also um this body is like in very um perfect shape in term I'm speaking of 3D <laughs> modeling and there is no distortions happening and all that it's usually a thing in your work that you work with your distorted body in this case you decided not to do this and have like um, no distortions from the scans inside why did you choose make this decision mm, well before working with this 3D scan I was making you know this project called um, uh, virtual narcissist and that was all about trying to make a 3d selfie of myself by myself at home with a very cheap 3d scanner and the results were really distorted bodies um, and I kind of wanted to see the opposite so what happens when I actually go to a studio that have a proper equipment to make a photogrammetry scan of my body and what it would do for me to work with a different with, with an actually high quality uh, looking scan instead of like the super distorted one um mm. so yeah that was a bit the reason behind i just wanted to have the extreme of what i was already working at at home right i see and how did it change then for you what what it changed how did it feel to use this new avatar for you um at the beginning it was a bit hard in the sense that i didn't do it you know like the studio <laughs> did it for me so <laughs> It was a bit, it was, you know, like the, the virtual narcissism scans, uh, I'm just going to quickly share the screen so that maybe people can also see that. So the, three, the virtual narcissism scans were really distorted and gruesome somehow. And it had a lot there with my process of 3D scanning. I was very attached to those. Um, and when I got my perfect 3D scan, it was like getting to know some, somebody else, you know, like something that was not really me. Um, of course, I grew to love it, um, but it, it was hard at the beginning. It, it just felt like it was not really me because it just came from an email of someone else. 
uh, <laughs> after I just went there and, you know, stand in t pose and got scanned by this machine. So, <laughs> Right, I see. And um, yeah, as we see here in, in your work, virtual narcissism, it's already becomes clear that you work with, with your outer appearance um, quite for a while now in your work and you still continue to, to do so, as we will see later. And um, maybe you can tell us about why you started with it. Like, what kind of personal situation have you been in when, when you started it? Did something change in your life? Or did you just, like, just start with it and try this new technology? Mm, well, when I started, and I did start with what then became virtual narcissism, was uh, the time when I was done with all my lectures and I, you know, I wanted to diploma and I needed to find a project for my thesis. And then I was still collaborating a lot with Stefan Valesio and we just, you know, he was, uh, he didn't want to diploma at the time. So we thought, okay, I, I actually need to propose like a project that it's my own. And at the time I was also working for and with Klaus Obermeier and we were working with Unity and I just thought, okay, I, I just want to combine my passion for 3D and my passion for interactive art. Um, and at the same time, you know, I was kind of, uh, I had to force myself out of second life because it became a really strong addition for me. So I had all this co coming basically into this one month where I just started to play around with 3D scanning and my own body. And I really felt, um, you know, after being so long in second life, I started to go in social media like Facebook and whatnot. So I started to create more and more avatars of myself basically online. So there was right. the kind of, how do I relate with all of those? I was used to relate just with my one avatar in Second Life. And then suddenly I had to deal with so many. Right. <laughs> and Sorry. Oh, go ahead, Tina. Go ahead. Sorry. Sorry, it was just so interesting that you mentioned Second Life because I really wonder how your avatar in Second Life uh, looked like. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, I don't have a picture here. <laughs> was it like, was it also very close to your natural appearance or did you choose something totally different in the appearance? Actually, I got to think about this yesterday that my avatar in Sekulai was really, really tiny and really, really thin and had really tiny eyes and she was all cutesy looking and moving and she would have crazy clothes and crazy hair all the time. And I was starting to, like in the last month or two, I downloaded The Sims and there I created an avatar that actually looks so much like me. So it's not thin at all and it's like, you know, it has my own body figures somehow. Uh, hairs are not fully straight, they're slightly curly and it, it's quite interesting to see how, yeah, how it changed my urge in, in when I'm creating an avatar right now. And I think it has a lot to do with the fact that over the years, I've been working with my own body in the virtual a lot. And mm -hmm. somehow I, I'm slowly coming to acceptance on how I look and... <laughs> yeah. But Martina, in fact, I wanted to ask you that, you know, you, you use a lot your body in your body of work as an artist and, you know, as a way to like convey your, your message, your artistic message. I was, you know, in, in, the, in the VR piece that we saw, the body is like at the mercy of the viewer and is, you know, giving you meanings as is like objectify, st like stretch out, um, toast around. I was wondering, like, what is, what is your relationship with your body at this point? I think it's a, an important question to ask. <laughs> like with my physical body, you mean? Yeah, your real body, uh, yeah, not uh, the virtual. <laughs> yeah, it's not easy. I'm, uh, I am extremely strict with myself and I, I have very few things of my body that I do like, and it's mainly my eyes, actually. <laughs> and I, I actually hate most of how my body looks. And um, I think the reason why I ended up working so much with my body in the virtual is because of like, I needed somehow to, you know, get over this <laughs> and accept how I look and accept the fact that in the physical world, I cannot have, I don't know, one day blue hair and one day red hair and one, day short hair and one day long hair. So I think this has been super hard for me coming from the second life years, you know, like the, there I could be anything I wanted at any times. And in the physical world, you, you just, you're what you get. basically. Um, do, you, do you think you could, um, you could turn on the VR again? Yes, I can try again. 
I, I was I was one one another question that I have. I was wondering if you have ever considered making the experience in the plug your nose and try to um uh, more collective. So it's like by allowing more people in the virtual environment. Uh, I did not, and I think I would not add this uh, possibility in the in, in especially in this project because I do like this being alone. You know being just immersed in this space and being by yourself with all these bodies. Um, I think, I might be wrong, but I think if I would add more people in this space, it would just get like a sort of competition of who can throw these bodies more far or more brutally. <laughs> um, I do like what it does when you are in VR and you're just like, yeah, you, you just go into another space, you know, it, it's just so, it can be so meditative also, this project. Um, it can be relaxing to just hear this humming, you know, and just look at how they float around. It's just really nice, you know, like, physics they have it's it's just something that can can bring you really to kind of being by yourself and and just yeah kind of relax also if you want right it's also totally meditative in some way also the sound of course um gives a it's very special in this piece i would say yeah. <laughs> um yeah, we would also like to know more about your face in this uh, chat today because you're obviously wearing a mask, right, of yourself. Yes. I do. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not Martina's usual face, but still it is her usual face. <laughs> Maybe you could tell us more about this project. Um, yeah, so <laughs> it's, I really love what you just said because actually it's, it's not my face or like my usual face, but it is exactly my face when someone's trying to take a picture and I'm conscious about it. <laughs> so, um, well, this project started like a long time ago. I think it was more or less the same time as when I started with Beautiful Narcissism. And I just, you know, I was trying to make the 3D scans of my full body and I was failing in making them perfect. So I thought, what if I tried to make a selfie of only my face and I just end up with this. So with that expression of like slight surprise and <laughs> uh, a bit, <laughs> yeah, whatever. Um, and I didn't know what to do. I just like, okay, I'm going to just put it in my hard drive and one day maybe I'm going to use it for a project. Um, yeah, and then I basically had the luck of like finding out about Snapchat. I mean, I was very late on finding out about Snapchat and the fact that you could actually build filters and having them in there. Um, so I thought, oh, that's so perfect. You know, like I don't want to make these beautifying kind of filters. I just want to, to see what happens when people can, and myself included, can wear this kind of face mask. Uh, that I had in my hard drive. So that was the first attempt and I just love how creepy uh, but also maybe funny this looks looked on me and I thought I really want to see how other people look with this. Um, so then after that I started uh, like two projects more or less at the same time. I think the first was like you know having this call where basically people could wear the filter and send me videos while they were wearing this face. Mm -hmm. Um, and at the same time, I just started to play around in Unity with the space and I built what became my second VR project, which is all around VR familiar faces. Uh, I'm just gonna mm -hmm. maybe share the screen so you can also uh, see my, yeah. So can you see the photo? Yes, um, not yet. I can oh, see the thumbnails of screenshots. <laughs> something that okay now you should ah oh, no it's there mm. yeah yeah, yeah it's, so um, the face filter was first actually right first was the yeah, filter was, and it then was, in, it was not really first or second it was really kind of a parallel situation there um i just wanted to see what could happen when i have a vr piece that somehow is also connected with the face filter that it's online and opposite ways um so in the vr piece you're basically having a lot of these faces all of them 
uh, creating the environment. So there is nothing else, as in plug your nose, there is nothing else except the faces or the entities in the VR place. Um, there is a cloud of faces that just try to stop you from looking at this environment, which is also done by faces. So it's like this redundance, redundance of faces. Um, and as a user, what you can do is basically draw um, with the faces like a sort of sculptural element from the bottle, from the face to an abstract sculpture somehow. Mm -hmm. And it can become really crazy. Like, I, I really love this photo where it was just mm -hmm. like wall of of the same face um and yeah and as i was saying at the same time there was this familiar faces project where basically i yeah i collected videos from users um all of them using <laughs> the same face i was putting online and it ended up being an installation on ipads uh where you basically look at those uh videos in a random loop but you also get the real time face tracking so you can be part of the project anytime there is an exhibition as well. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, so that's how it and how did it feel when the users went totally crazy with the masks and creating sculptures with your face? Did it feel similar to your experience with a plug, uh, plug your nose or was it different? It was different in the sense that somehow I didn't care what the people were doing with my faces in that project. Mm -hmm. um, it, I actually got more uh, weird feelings when I saw like, uh, you know, people dancing or being in a bathtub or, you know, uh, putting up the shirt and having my face on. This felt so much more uncanny for me than um, all around me are familiar faces, my VR project. Um, the other thing is also the sculpture that you create is so much around in VR. It's, it's very immersive because you can just move and turn, you know, with these faces and what you see from from the outside perspective is not the same as when you are in VR of course um, also when you are done and you take off the headset you do not the, the sculpture just deletes itself so it's a very temporal sculpture that happens um, so I think like in that, that situation like in, with this project I didn't have such a strong connection with face it for example with plug your nose okay um martina let's let's move forward and let's talk about uh your work in progress um that you named uh, when you are close to me i shiver um in this work you rely on like strikingly strikingly raw and evocative visuals um to speculate on like humanity after like a socio-ecological crisis um, you know, I already, Tina and I, of course, you know, saw this, this, this work already. And, you know, as, as, you, as you can see, the participants, the, the audience can see, the landscape is dominated by humans. And <clears throat> these are, again, 3D scans of uh, Martina's body. Most of them are defenseless. They try to survive. Sometimes they move only to collapse over like one another later and you know there is there's what we can see is just you know a little bit of sun uh that shines a bit to to and it seems to be the only source of hope in a otherwise hopeless um representation like landscape so could you describe us the genesis of this work did a particular event trigger it um yes actually uh, i think that's the only project i ever did in which i did not start by just playing around in unity but i started from a very clear image i had in mind um so the event that triggered that was um so the practical event was me watching our planet the documentary that you can see on netflix and there was like one episode in which you had uh the 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 sea lions like massing on an island because that was the only island that they could go and rest uh, after hunting and there was just not enough space for them to be there so they would climb on these huge mountains and then at one point they would just fall from this mountain and it was so dramatic and while i was looking at that i felt this sadness of course for these animals and at the same time i just kept seeing the same scene done with with my own bodies and um there was i think it was also like a time in my life where 
a lot of things were in transition and I was not in a super good place. So I felt like just, you know, there was a lot of performance from my side of like, you know, having a lot of social life and meeting and openings and things. And I just felt I was just, yeah, throwing all these avatars basically in the physical world as well as in the virtual, just like helplessly around me. So like, I think these two things combined made me think of this project and um, it's, as you say, it's, it's still so much in work, so it's not done at all. Um, I'm basically working on the environment right now, as you can see, it's like this kind of uh, island out of uh, debris, but are like city debris, so you can see like bricks. It's not a natural island like, you know, you would find next to the seaside. Um, and I was basically spending a lot of time placing all those bodies. I can zoom out a lot. <laughs> That's so much huge. It's really huge. And I'm going to just quickly start the project. Hopefully this time we're a bit more lucky. So this always takes a while because it's in Unity, it's not a finished one. <laughs> <laughs> It's a preview of your like extreme story. preview of my work. Um, uh, so maybe while it's loading, I'm just gonna quickly say another thing. So at the moment, you won't see any interaction happening. Um, it's just the landscape itself. And oh yeah, here we go. Awesome. But maybe you can tell us a little about the interaction you're planning to have. Yeah. So um, I'm just gonna maybe stand because otherwise you're gonna be on the floor with me. Um, yeah, so as you can see, it's just this long distance bodies all kind of sleeping, very stressed. Some of them are rather stressed, so they kind of turn really fast. Some are not moving at all. And on top of the, mount of the mountains, you have like every now and then these bodies just like being spawned and like fall um, on the floor. And what I am thinking, what was really nice or like was dramatic actually but in the documentary there was this amazing text um and i just thought i'm just gonna take this text and just change it that it means something for like a uh, human situation more than the animal situation so the basic idea i have right now for the interaction is that spread all over the islands there are certain bodies that if you look at they will stand up and you will just go towards them and then each of them will tell you one sentence of this text that I put together. So, um, so you, you go close to them and then some of them would stand up and talk to you? Exactly. Or, so, yeah, no, you, you will just, when you start the project, you will be like here. Um, mm -hmm. And let's say I'm just going to look here and then suddenly one body will stand and I would be teleported next to it. Mm -hmm. and then oh. the body will, will talk to me and just tell me a brief sentence about this project and then I can go to the next one and the next one and by doing that I would just go around the island and oh. out to the mountain. So that's okay. going to be like the main interaction uh, but what I'm also trying, I'm working on some like subtle interaction like not really subtle like secondary interactions that, that might happen in the project um, I kind of want to drag bodies around every time I'm in this piece. Um, I am not satisfied with just looking and moving. I always you know I have the controllers and I want to do things with the controllers. Um, so I'm thinking to kind of have always some bodies like following me always around the island. Mm -hmm. So these are the two interactions I'm working on right now. Um, yeah, and as I say, it's very, very much in progress. So let's see if I will stick with these ideas or if totally it change dramatically by the end. Uh, like finally to use like you know a skin and not the usual darkness I have in my mm -hmm. art pieces. Um, I think it does a lot in this case, like this openness. Um, and sound wise also is going to be quite a work because I want to give of course the idea of the water like you know they are surrounded by water uh, but I also do not want to have the ocean sound because I do not want this piece to be pleasant in the end um, right. so I'm thinking to have like 
you know, like, I don't know, I always have Titanic in mind. <laughs> it's like a very lame <laughs> reference, I'm sorry, but I do love Titanic. Um, uh, there is, you know, like this classic sound of boat sinking, you know, this crackling metal sound. Mm. And I want to have this running in the piece. I do not want the, yeah, the meditative wave sound at all. So the only thing, as George said before, that should kind of stay as a sort of hope at the end is like mm -hmm. this kind of sun, which is not really bright as well. It's very foggy, the old feeling that you have. I mean, yeah, it's, it's a very dystopic. Um work with lots of uh, associations thinking about refugees also and um, I was wondering because uh, there are two things that uh, strike me in your um, description of it one is of course the interaction with, which seems very different from the first pieces because here you you know in the first piece you could you the users could interact with your body like physically interact and uh, change your body but here the users wouldn't even like really touch yourself your your avatars right yeah. um yeah i think for me it was like i do like sometimes to challenge myself and like go a bit out of my comfort zones and i kind of needed a shake um i had a couple of months where i was not doing anything uh, art wise and i kind of felt stuck before this project happened um and I thought, okay, this is maybe a good way, you know, I anyway start this project differently than usual. So maybe also the interaction is going to be a different kind of interaction compared to the previous works. Mm -hmm. um, of course, you know, like when I, when I had this image, it was about animals in like the climate change the situation we are all living in. And it was also the time where, you know, I'm from Italy and there was, you know, Venice with so much uh, high water situation, really dramatic uh, things happening. Um, so I think this just was there in my mind, of course. At the same time, there was this feeling of being helpless, you know, all over social media. And uh, I am not per se a very social person. <laughs> I do like to be <laughs> home alone. So when I'm too much in a social situation, I kind of, you know, uh, I get stressed a lot. <laughs> so I think I also, like at the beginning, I was questioning, shall I use avatars or like bodies of different types um, all over this place? Or is it still about, you know, uh, identity, multiple identities today for me and for, I guess, lots of us? Uh, I didn't want to not work with 3D scans of myself anymore. So I just, I just combined these two things together, like all my topics from previous works and this kind of emotional states I was in and uh, kind of, yeah, emotional situation I was experiencing or yeah, yeah, right. experiencing in this time also. <laughs> yeah, that's really interesting because that's, that's also a shift um, in your work that you expanded, that you expand your topic of synthetic co corporeality and deal with um, today's social, ecological or economic um, issues or crisis in a way that's also um, a very new aspect of your life. Yeah. yeah of this work and um, yeah. I hope so too. Yeah, it wasn't a question anymore because you just described also the, um, the circumstances, that the circumstances were different when you started to um, create this work for you, that you interacted yeah. more in the social world and... Um, yeah, I'm having a bit, I'm a bit, you know, I'm not working on it that much as I would like to. And I think it has, you know, we are in a situation that I am still kind of adapting to, you know, being at home and not being able to go out, which is also weird because I'm not that social, but I realize what I miss actually of the social part of my life. Uh, but I do really want to slowly go back to this project and finish it. Yeah. Um, I, I just wonder, you know, it's, it's, um, you know, I, when I, when I, when I watch your work, there is a feeling of, you know, despair and helplessness, helplessness, uh, you know, condensing in like these, these visuals. Um, I, it's, it's, it, it's hard, at the same time, it's hard to think of an artist succumbing to despair, you know, without striving to find like an antidote to the situation. Um, so I mean, this is especially more important to know what is given the times we're you know currently living in. So I was wondering what has kept you, uh, your morale, and you know, and you and your morale up nowadays. 
Um, I know it might sound cheesy to say, but like I, I'm really grateful I can teach still during the situation. I, I think in the last years while creating art, I always had also teaching. And for me, these two things are always going together. Like I'm, I'm feeding on like being able to give tips and share my experiences with other people. Uh, so being able to work on like with my students and to search other platforms that we can all access during these hard times have has keeping me quite up these days. At the same time, also like being able to do art. I mean, I'm not particularly working so much on this project, but I'm always doing little things like I discovered Mozilla Hubs and now I'm totally digging it and like learning it and making experiences there. So I, I never not do art even during these hard times. I think I just gave myself like the first week when I was in the lockdown where I literally did nothing because I had to kind of recharge. Uh, but then after that one week, I started to, you know, reconnect with artists and share experience with artists and create art and yeah, every now and then come into this project and put a bit of effort on the scripting and so on and so forth. So hopefully okay. it goes well. <laughs> so let, let's, let's open the floor to um, questions from, uh, from the audience. Uh, I, uh, so I, so if you, if you want to leave some questions, please leave it in the chat box, either here on, like on Zoom or Facebook. Uh, I'm checking both regularly. Um, what, what, uh, you know, one question I wanted to ask is, uh, you come from an interactive installation background and performance background. So I think in a, in a way, virtual, virtual reality has allowed you to you know, fulfill all of the fantasies in a way that, you know, you, you had before they were limited to, you know, to physicality in a physical space. So I was wondering how, you know, VR um, has helped you fulfilling, you know, reaching these fantasies. What adjustments have you made along the way? I mean, VR has helped me massively. It's, um, I just, I don't know, I, I really have a hard time not doing VR when I'm doing interactive things like anymore. Uh, it, it has just so many more possibilities for me. I mean, I'm not saying that, you know, if you do interactive art, you should do VR. Uh, but for me, this really helped, like the fact that I could not have something, you know, just frontal, but it's like all around you. And the interaction is not, again, only frontal or related to one sensor or multiple sensor, but happens with your own body. So like the body becoming really so important when you are in VR and also the full experience. I did, of course, had to make adjustment in the sense that uh, usually when I would create interactive installation, there is always you have to think, you know, people will need to be, um, you know, come to the space or like check that there is some kind of interaction happening, getting to know it. Uh, so you have to always create so many layers so that the people can enjoy the interaction while learning the interaction. Um, somehow this stayed in my VR project as well. So you have all these la layers. Um, I think it's more like the adjustment happened more in the setup. So VR gives you so much freedom in the way that you could set it up in a physical space. Uh, while when you create an interactive, I don't know, projection, you need to know that the projection has to be there and the camera has to be on the floor or whatever. So I think for me was a, had, has been hard to check how to set up a VR work that is somehow, you know, new and not common. Um, but that's the only, the only thing that I still am working on. Okay, also, are there any questions from the discussion from Facebook? Um, Is there anything? No, 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 no questions? Facebook, no, so you can, you can go ahead. You can ask. So. I have um, also like a last um, question for you, Martina. It's actually two questions, but I'll phrase it as one question. <laughs> as one question. So what seems really important for you in your works are the titles of the works, which were, are very special to me. Maybe you can ex talk about the titles a little and also the sounds, how you create the sounds, how you choose the sound is very special. Also, maybe you could also talk about the sounds a little bit. Right. So, titles is always the last thing that <laughs> I do. Um, 
I think we, like it depends on, on the projects. Like some, I have to actually spend quite some time like thinking and researching possible keywords online and you know getting inspired. Um, with plug your nose and try to hum, that was a very happy, fast uh, accident. So the sound happened at the at the end. Like everything was was running, and um, I always wanted to be able to sing, and I am really bad at it. Like extremely bad at it. Um, so I kind of wanted my authors to be able to sing, and what I did, I was just like humming something, and just cut this humming, and give them like random pitches, so you know they would sound slightly different, and. I just loved it how like they, they, they sound creepy and cute at the same time so i was really happy with the result there um and when i was searching for the title i was just searching keywords on google and i was typing like hum and then i ended up in this <laughs> in this whatever i don't even remember like a website where someone said try to plug your nose and try to hum and i did it immediately and if you do that it's almost impossible to hum while you're plugging your nose and I felt so stupid and I thought, oh my God, it would be so amazing if people in an exhibition space, you know, would read the title and would actually have this extra interaction from the title and everybody would just plug the nose and try to talk. <laughs> of course, this never happened, but um, yeah, it was just a funny thing I wanted to, to add. Um, I don't know if that, so that plug your nose particularly or if it was more a general. Yeah, it was more general question, but of course, plugin also tried to have a very special <laughs> in these terms. Right? I mean, sounds, I, I do like to do things by myself, like I'm very stubborn. Um, I do not like to ask help if I can manage by myself. <laughs> uh, so that's why like, if the sounds are in my work are like not crazy advanced, but like I try my little to, you know, make them immersive enough and relatable enough with the project itself. As for the titles, it really depends. So. Um, I mean, all around me are familiar faces, it just came like naturally when I had the project finish, I was like, okay, it has to be that quote, it has to be that title. Um, yeah. I think like with, with the last project, I was not really sure. I didn't, I didn't want to give like a title that would like per se relate to, you know, that situation I had in mind when I created the project. Uh, but at the same time, you know, all these bodies are there and masked next to each other. so. I just wanted to give a bit of a hint of that in the title. Um, yeah, so it, it really that varies. Awesome. The project. Yeah, we, so we have a question. But, oh, sorry, Tina, go ahead. No, no, no. I just wanted to say that, um, thank you, Martina, for this. And also, as you just said, the words um, creepy, cute, and uncanny, totally, like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> summarize, like, uh, like, so many aspects of your works for me. and. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. <laughs> I have a question for Martina from the audience, from the public. Um, Mary is asking, you talked about how it feels for you that people wear or manipulate your face and body. But did you get people telling you what it feels to be so close to your body and what did what did what it did to them? Uh, on the project with the face, you mean like that with the face. I think I, I think, I she, just I think she's just talking in general. I think she's um, just talking in general. Well, yeah. I, I do I do try to be as much as possible at my opening so I can kind of get a feeling from the audience how they experience my work but also what they felt. And so far it has been very satisfying in a sense that I always had uh, feedback where people were like creeped out in a positive way or uh, once a woman was completely freaking out with plug your nose and she just couldn't handle like to be violent against the body so she was like actually uh, extremely unsettled from from using my project um so i think somehow not in all my project but most of the time it works that people do feel a connection with those beautiful bodies and um i i am happy that somehow it it is not only a relation that i have with those bodies but also that the user kind of you know, managed to create that. Um, I mean, with the face filter, I had, I had a lot of feedback, of course, because now it's also on Instagram and Facebook, not only on Snapchat. So I do get often like messages with people just, you know, hanging at home and send me a picture of them with my face. Um, and it's always like this. I think with most of my projects, you have a first laugh 
because it is funny, but then if you take the time to stay in the project, you get to know the uncanny feelings and you get to know the connections with, the, with these bodies and the possibility of like creating a strong um, yeah, connection and trigger physical reactions as well while yeah. using them. I, I have another question from the audience, but we, we are about um, we are about to uh, wrap everything up. Uh, but the last question from the audience from Peter says, Peter says, there is something so profound about this work um, and with like what's going on outside and all around us. I think he's referring about your, your, the second piece that we saw. He said, Peter continues and says, life is coming and going so quickly, our, our bodies are so fragile and expandable. What's your take on it? I think I'm struggling as a lot of us. Um, it, it has been like the last month, it has been a, a long and not always funny process of like getting to understand the situation we are in and you know, thinking about the future and how we are going to still, you know, go out and hug again. And um, I am not sure yet. I, I think I think all of us, we can't really be sure of how it's going to be. And I think it's going to take a lot from us, from each of us to, you know, rethink what the new normal is going to be after this uh, quarantine is over, if it's over soon. We don't know, but like... Um, it's definitely, I think it's definitely going to be a different, different normality. We, we can't go back to what was before. And I do hope that people uh, realize, you know, we, we've seen, you know, like sky being cleared because people were staying at home, not traveling that much. So I hope that people will see this like as a positive thing that we are learning out of this situation. Uh, to be respectful to the environment, to be respectful towards the other. Um, although, you know, I, you already see, you know, news of like people just throwing gloves on the floor. So I do hope that we can get something nice out of this very awful situation we are living. Um, but I don't have really an answer to that <laughs> yet. I will, keep, I will keep my fingers crossed. I think everyone yeah. will do like... Yes. Um, <laughs> I see, I'm seeing Tina crossing her fingers right away. <laughs> All right. Um, well, we have reached the end of today's walkthrough. I would like, I would like to thank so very much, uh, Tina and Martina. This was awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you, George, for the invite. It was great. I'm just going to quickly show my face. I think I am. <laughs> <laughs> Martina! Hi, Martina. Um, <laughs> so very much and thanks everyone that was looking and right. watching and asking questions and of course i also want to add i'm on instagram facebook emails just if you have more questions just contact me i'm always happy to answer it yeah thank you thank you very much again uh we will see um we'll see each other again next week on wednesday the 24th uh, for a walk through with Pastor Placek and uh, Juliet Bibas. Thank you very much, everyone, who joined us, and see you next week. Bye. 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 Bye, -bye. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to wait. Okay, good.